The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. When some were speaking about the temple, how, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you, they will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please understand, Jesus is not giving us a road map to the end of the world. Rather, it's more like a survival guide for living through the days before the end. And when you come to think about it, the days before the end are all the time. We've already seen all the bad stuff in our world that Jesus is talking about. Wars and insurrections and earthquakes and famines and plagues, nation against nation, congregational meetings. We've seen all this before and we can see it right now again if we look around. Now, right now, we're not exactly being hauled before the authorities for our faith just yet. But even so, our credibility is being tested all the time by what we say to one another, what we say to one another right here, what we say to one another everywhere. Jesus says that all these things will be opportunities for us to testify. Testify? Oh, no, 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 no. Don't expect me to speak up. Words, words fail me. I think I'd rather leave testifying to the pros. Besides, testimony is reserved for those folks with blessings, not with sufferings and hardships. Well, no, you can't quite get off that easily. Jesus says that he'll give you the words when you need them, and wisdom too. That's a real bonus. You see, Jesus actually has already given those words to you and to us together. God's final saving work for his whole world began and culminates in Jesus. Words about Jesus' cross and resurrection are the words that tell us everything that we need to know about our own suffering and about our own victory over any kind of final destruction and death. Everything that we need to know about our place in God's future. 
baptized into Jesus' death, we ought not be surprised by sharing in his sufferings. And baptized into Jesus' resurrection, we ought not be surprised to share in his victory either over sin and evil, destruction and death. We know what God has done. Jesus has given us plenty to say already. So here's the thing that maybe you haven't thought of. To testify about what God has done has power. It has power to change not only those who hear, but to change those who speak. Wars and insurrections are part of Jesus' list, yes, and we're wrong to ever be casual about thinking that they're acceptable in our world, but what about all the other things? What about the personal and systemic evil all around us? The racism that we won't admit to, the sexism that we're blind to, classism, which seems to so many of us, well, that's only fair, poverty, which we declare to be a moral problem for the poor, hatred, which takes the form of righteousness, things that actually kill the human soul. Doesn't Jesus have something to say about those things? Don't we have something to testify about? I know, I know, don't rock the boat, this is church. But a congregation that never rocks the boat has probably forgotten how to steer it. Here's one man's testimony, one man's testimony. I've seen too much hate to want to hate myself. And every time I see it, I say to myself, hate is too great a burden to bear. Somehow we must be able to stand up against our most bitter opponents and say, we shall match your capacity to inflict suffering by our capacity to endure suffering. We will meet your physical force with soul force. Do to us what you will and we will still love you but be assured that we will wear you down by our capacity to suffer, and one day we will win our freedom. We will not only win freedom for ourselves, but we will so appeal to your heart and conscience that we will win you in the process, and our victory will be a double victory. That sounds like church to me. It also sounds like Martin Luther King. The victory that Jesus brings, you see, is not one where we gloat with raised hands over our enemies, but rather a victory which, through which enemies become friends, a victory through which warriors become worshipers, through which sinners claim their sainthood and where members become disciples, a victory where justice ends in mercy. And that's the content of your testimony. And if you can't say it even in those four words, then turn in your card, <laughs> you know? Gee whiz, folks, it's not that hard. That's not what you have to say. That's what we get to say, because that's what's happened for us. The good news is that Jesus will remind you, so go and testify.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the people of God gathered here and throughout the world, we offer our prayers for the Church, those in need, and all of creation. For the Church, for missionaries and teachers, clergy and laity, and all ministers who proclaim the gospel in word and deed, that the Son of Righteousness enlighten the whole earth, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For rivers and lakes, hills and mountains, fruit and vegetables, and animals great and small, that creation thrive, and that we care for all God has given us. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all in authority at the local, state, provincial, national, and international levels, for those who advocate for equity, and for relief workers and their supporters, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those who hunger or thirst, for those who doubt or are terrified, for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Blanche, Joyce, Beverly, John, Harold, Michelle, Jerry, Bob Jr., Fern, Judy, Dolly, Frank, Emily, Lydia, Joanne, John, Kevin, Todd, Larry, Pilar, Craig and Margaret, Dorothy, Greg, Joyce, Marie, Irene, Ingrid, Richard and Shirley, Alicia and Cameron, and for caregivers that all experience the healing and comfort given through Christ. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those gathered in this place to hear the gospel and receive the good gifts of God through Christ Jesus, that guided by the Holy Spirit, we serve our neighbor who is in need. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God in thanksgiving for men and women of every time and place who have died in Christ, and that we follow their examples of faithful living. Let us pray. Have mercy on you. Almighty God, you have promised to hear those who call upon your name. We commend all our spoken and silent prayers to you, trusting in your abundant mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us extend a sign of his peace one to another.
us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. <coughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos, you encircled the globe with air, you created fire for warmth and light, you nourished the lands with water, you molded us in your image, and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own so that we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit, you called to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your Son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming, when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and compassionate, send upon us in this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions, as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessing, until needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours, O God, O living one, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, 